Hello and welcome back to the episode 29 of the Scotch Podcast. Today we are joined by 2024 boarding captains Regan Hall and Archie Barriston. First off, the first question of the day, what year did you start boarding? Where are you from and how did the day-to-day life run at home? Archie? Um, well, I started boarding in year eight. Um, in 2020, I think it was, and now, uh, uh, when I first came to school, I lived in Darwin, and then last year, term three holidays, we moved over to New South Wales, so Armidale, um, in a day-to-day life. It's just sort of similar to everyone else, I just sort of wake up, every day is different, I don't know, yeah, no, no really, nothing really set in stone, so. What school did you go to up in Darwin before you came to Scotch? Uh, a school called, uh, Essington. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Good school. Regan? Um, wait, what were the questions? <laughs> um, what year did you start boarding? Where are you from? And how did your day-to-day life go at home? Um, so I started boarding in year 10, so a bit later on. Uh, I'm from Jamestown. Um, day-to-day life, again, like Archie, pretty basic. Um, I guess like in the holidays, lambing season, and we had like little puppies. So like every morning you have to get up, feed the lamb, feed the puppies. Like yeah. a little milk bottle, just like a baby bottle. Uh, Archie, I've got a question for you now. Last week was boarders week. What were the events that took place in the boarding house in the week? Um, so we started off on the Sunday. Uh, we had, I think, six old collegians, or old boarders uh, mm-hmm. come in and talk to us about. So they were like, ranging from however long ago. One was from two years ago. They graduated all the way up to like four or five. Or so. I don't remember, but... Um, yeah, they came in and spoke to us about their experiences, lessons they, or things they wish they knew before they finished up school. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff like that. Um, and then well, I've to Tuesday we played, do we have the year five tours on Wednesday? Uh, oh, Tuesday, Monday. sorry. Oh, Monday. Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah, I started on Sunday. Good so planning, Monday, Archie. Monday we had uh, the year five tours, so they came up. Netball on at lunchtime. Did you play? Oh, I subbed on for a bit, but didn't do too much. We uh, lost by one point in overtime. Um, I don't know how accurate the scoring was, but for a close <laughs> we'll game. It. Yeah, we'll take it. Um, and then Wednesday we had the barbecue. That was good. Uh, a fair few people came out to that, thankfully. Um, what else? Thursday we had basketball. Um, was that a close match? I didn't end up seeing it. No, <laughs> the water's the water's lost. Yeah, oh. unfortunately, but it's all right. Day school has a bigger selection, so mm. we we'll use that as our um. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> no, we don't we don't even need excuses. But um, what else have we done Thursday? Was it what day um, did we have the year seven tours? Oh, that was that was on Tuesday. Oh, I forgot about that. And then yeah, we, Thursday was we had the student, uh, not student, the senior leadership team come in. Yeah. Um, next question, living with over 100 people comes with its challenges. Do you find you develop a, a sibling-like relationship with other people in the boarding house? If so, name them. Do you want to go first? Okay, um, yes, 100%. Um, I feel like, especially like last year in my first year, I, I was roommates with Liv Clark for a very long time. So um, <laughs> definitely a lot of I guess banter and stuff going on there. And yeah, I guess I've also got my actual sister in the boarding house. So you've also got that aspect yeah. too, but yeah. Um, I reckon definitely we all, um, all of the boys in our year, we all, we all get along with one another. Like we're all, I'd say we're all sibling. Like we all sort of uh, don't get along some days, but get along most of the time. So yeah, you all sort of, when you live that close with so many people all the time, you sort of have to make it work. Um, yeah, if it, if it if you can't work it out between you, it's not really going to be a good time. So Yeah, 100%. Um, we were having a chat about this before, about what is the funniest story you have in the boarding house. Um, we've put, all put our heads together and I think Archie come up with a good one. Um, so pretty much there was a kid back in, what were we, in year nine, I think. He was in our dorm um, and we thought we'd give him a haircut. So... He wanted, uh, I can't remember what he wanted, but it wasn't short. So we got the clippers out, uh, no no number on the end of the clippers. So it was just, just the blade and shaved him right back to nothing. 
um, and even got the razor out that you use on your face and shaved it right back. So I don't think his mum was too happy about that one. Neither was uh, the boarding house. They were a bit, I don't even know if they were unhappy. They were more just shocked. Um, so yeah, that, was, that was pretty funny. Good look, look, good look for Dicko. Yeah. Um, Regan, do you have any funny stories from the girls' wing? Um, not necessarily that funny, but I can just remember just like back in your tent after hand up when you're supposed to be in bed and you're like, you're in other girls' rooms. I think it was a few times I hid in the closet when I heard a tutor come in. Um, that was quite funny. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just going along with that, Archie, I'm not sure about, uh, sorry, Regan, I'm not sure about you, but I don't know hallway cricket and hiding a seag at night time after hand up is uh, pretty popular in our wing. Do you have any yeah. stories about that? Um, what do we do? Yeah, we got some duct tape once and set up stumps on the door and played cricket down the hallway. But uh, if, uh, someone smashed the Wi-Fi thing on the roof. So <laughs> that wasn't too good. There's just a lot of, I don't know, I can't really remember all of them. There's just a lot of funny stories. Like we all used to go into each other's rooms at night and I don't know, the, at the roof, like the roof and the rooms aren't connected. So you can climb from room to room. Yeah. When the tutors come in, we'd all just domino down the, down the line of rooms and yeah. It's just, there's a lot of funny stories. Can't even remember half of them, but yeah, it's always a good time in the boarding house. Yeah, it's always good fun. Um, for Boarders Week Assembly, we had this show, Farmer Wants a Wife, up on the big screen. If you could be in any re- reality TV show, what would it be and why? Uh, I'd probably say Farmer Wants a Wife. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I also have some insight, you know, I'd be able to... I don't know, I guess going into it, you just pretend that you know nothing and then you can blow the farmers away, you know? they can You can surprise them. <laughs> um, uh, TV show. I'd probably try to do the block, but uh, maybe boarding house style. Do up boarding houses, go around. I don't even think the, the show doesn't exist, but it'd be good to create, I reckon. Go around doing up boarding houses. My strategy to win, uh, I'd probably try to win over the kids, not the staff. <laughs> uh, just because majority majority rules, so that'd be my strategy. If you could change anything about the dorms in the boarding house, what would it be and why? Uh, I don't know. I know we used to have a lot of a lot of fights sometimes when it got into winter or the middle of summer uh, with the air cons because there's there's air cons in the whole dorm, but it's controlled by one controller. Um, yeah, I know. It was a big big temperature debate uh, whether we should go 22 or 23 or. 26 or what, yeah, whatever, but that was a big thing. And uh, the lights can be a bit annoying sometimes because the rooms aren't joined to the roof. So if someone wants to stay up with their lights on, it sort of keeps everyone else up. But that no, doesn't really happen too often. So. Regan, what would you change in the girls' wings? Oh, I don't know. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, like sharing a room, the lights and like, I don't know, I guess having like the half wall, you can hear everyone's conversations when they're on the phone and everything too. You hear some stuff that you know you probably should not yeah. hear sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. It's like it's not too bad. I like the boarding house and how it's set up at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I reckon the dorms would probably be the most fun years I've had in the boarding house because you're living... Like, you're up like, to so much mis- yeah, mischief in sort there. Sort of like you're on school camp for maybe it was, what, three years of school camp pretty much. Like it's, you're with your mates pretty closely all the time and it's just there's always fun stuff going on. So, but, yeah. 100%. Um... A couple of weeks ago, we had we had Kara and Shozzy on the podcast. We asked them a couple of questions and we would like uh, your thoughts on them. How would you defend yourself in the boarding house from a zombie apocalypse? Who'd, who would we sacrifice, do we reckon? I'd send Chike out. He's pretty good at wrestling, <laughs> pretty good at combat, so I'd send him out. Um, if there was someone there trying to argue, I'd send out Will Romer. He doesn't like losing arguments, so he'd, he'd be sure to stand up for the boarding house. Um, who else would we send out? I'll send out Dicko just for fun. Sam Dixon. Oh, See yeah. how he go. Well, he wouldn't stop talking, so I wouldn't be able to get past him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's pretty funny. Mm. Uh, Regan, uh, who would you send out? For? I don't know, actually. I'm trying to think. I feel like who'd be good at fighting? I feel like Izzy Hollum's actually. <laughs> I feel like she'd, <laughs> she'd somehow, somehow distract them in some way. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know who I keep, 100%. David and Paul, yeah. the two best chefs oh, I've yeah. ever keep seen. Yep. Yeah. Keep, keep the food, they can stay. Everyone yeah. else can go. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to keep, keep David and Paul. We've yep. got to keep... Yep. What else we have to keep? I can we keep Sammy P just for laughs? We have to keep the maintenance guys because when Blanche breaks TVs, we have to get him to come and <laughs> yeah. fix them up. Thanks, um, Blanche. Yeah. Um, well, we'd have to keep Kara, Shelsey, Sam, Susie. 
the other Sam and Ka- uh, Kathy, they'd probably have to stay. We wouldn't be able to survive. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, if you had to go get rid of one year level in the zombie apocalypse, which one would it be and why? I think, I'm pretty sure Shozio Kara said the year 10s. Yeah, I feel like the year 10s are a, they're a fair shout. Um, Maybe like... Year 10s. I'd say year 12s. Like you guys live long <laughs> oh, enough, right. you know. <laughs> Send out the year We've 12s. lived long enough, is yeah, that what you said? 100%. <laughs> we're not that old. I suppose we're about to leave anyway, but... Yeah, that's true, but... Um, uh, I'd probably say the 10s or 11s. Yeah. Yep. What was the significance of each other... Of the challenging in the year 12 mentor versus borders race in assembly. I didn't really understand that, but if you guys did, go for it. Oh, um, what do we have? Dry wheat bix. We ate them because sometimes you have to uh, make do with what you've got. So You yeah. eat dry no, wheat bix no, in the morning house. I think the, the girls improvise. wing, we've actually had two a few times because we just got that hungry. <laughs> really? I think <laughs> in the boys wing, what is it? Nutella and Jacks and Milo. Yeah, mm, but they, they, they go pretty quickly though. Yeah. yeah. So. Leave that in the boys' common room for half an hour. It'll be gone. Because yeah, <laughs> everyone comes in with the milk, makes Milo's and then all the milk's gone. So the Nutella got, Toasties. Yeah. yeah. Nutella Toasties is probably my favourite. Um, what else did we have? Oh, then we had the... the Make the Doona. Oh, yeah, the we had Duna. the Doona. Oh. That was just like... Well, I guess because we all have to do that. So it's kind of just... I just yeah, I yeah. just noticed at the start of every term... When everyone comes back, like that night, everyone's putting their donors in their donor covers and everyone's in the hallway trying to shake them out <laughs> and get them all leaving. Like everyone like does it. Um, yeah. What else was there? What um, else we had? The back, uh, cricket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Backyard cricket. I think backyard cricket, that's a big thing in the boys' wing. Yeah, every day nearly. Um, Especially when Blanche and that was downstairs. You'd just hear the ball and bat every hour. Yeah, I know. It never stopped. <laughs> a lot of arguments started over that. Yeah. People wanted to play basketball. People wanted to play cricket. Um. Oh, then we had the, like, non-official borders oh, uniform, yeah. just, like, the st- stuff that we got from yeah. the storeroom. Because everyone just – actually, that's that's a lie. People don't really wear that stuff, but people wear, no. like – There is an unofficial borders outfit. We just couldn't source enough of it. So we <laughs> yeah. Lost so, we, so we improvised. But normally, yeah, normally it's just, like, hoodies, Crocs. Yeah, here's a quick, quick uh, pop-up question. What are you guys, Burks or Croc people? Burks. Burks? Oh, I'm a Croc person. They're so much more versatile. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I can wear them out to a nice-ish dinner. <laughs> I can um, wear them in the water. They're yep. waterproof. Um, what else? They're light. You can squish them. I take mine everywhere. So that what colour Crocs do you have? Uh, well, uh, I had the camo ones because back when I was younger, I thought camo ones were cool. And then the they all, are cool, all, mate. all the colour wore off, so they were a bit of a greeny colour. And then they ripped and I put a hole through the bottom, so I had to go buy a new pair. I wanted to get camo again, but then I was like, oh, it's not really cool anymore. So I went for... Uh, it's a bit of a grey brown. It's hard to explain the colour, but a grey brown. Grey brown. That's the colour you chose out of all the colours I have. Yeah, can Warren pop it up? <laughs> pop up photo of the Crocs. Right. What are those? What are those? <laughs> Regan, what what type of Burks do you have? I know there's a couple of them. I've just got the classic ones. Oh, I yeah. feel like you can wear socks with them in the winter time. Any time of the year, they're good for. Yeah. But, yeah. The only bad thing about Crocs is when sometimes when it's a bit dewy, your feet get wet. Or yeah. Your socks go. I hate it. What are your thoughts on Uggies? I just thought of that then. Ugg boots? Ooh. I actually want some. I don't have any. so There are some horrendous looking pairs getting around the boarding house. <laughs> yeah. Some, some random pairs. Um, you see the classic ones get around in, in winter, but some people, I saw someone who, I don't even know who it was the other day. They're wearing these old man, old man <laughs> Ugg boots. Like, yep, yep. It's pretty funny, but. Hmm? Um, what, uh, what has been your experience in the boarding house taught you? Um, a lot actually. Um, I guess a lot of independence and then like structure is a big thing in the boarding house. Just like having the prep times actually making me do my work. Um, I guess that comes with a bit of organisation too. But yeah, just like independence, just you don't have to, being able to do things yourself. It's just, yeah. Archie? Um, experience of boarding. It's taught me a lot of things I reckon. I've learned. Sort of definitely how to become a bit more independent, um, how to get along with people, how to deal with situations when people are annoying you, things don't go, like a lot of day-to-day stuff and then um, a lot of structure with prep, um, which is like a very good thing, um, sort of dedicating time to do work. Um, and yeah, just having such a, such a schedule sort of helps, I reckon, especially for me, I'm a bit of a, like I sort of don't, 
struggle to focus sometimes, so it's having that schedule, sort of. Talking about struggling to focus, in what year did you actually start doing prep and prep? Because I know in my year level, in year nine, there's a lot of boys that just play games or just muck around. Oh, what was it? Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I did a drop at work. <laughs> year nine, I remember doing a few science assignments. Year 10, I started, started doing work when I had it, but they were like, Sort of came in blocks, like you'd have work, then no work, then work. And then year 11 and 12, it's really ramped up. Um, year 12, there's always sort of work, but um, yeah, definitely. Regan, did you ever play games in prep <laughs> or watch movies or YouTube? Um, I guess I came in year 10, so it was kind of a bit later. I didn't really, I would definitely would have if I was in the younger year levels. I remember at home, I procrastinated so much, did watch so much more TikTok than I should have back in year eight and nine, but in year 10, definitely when you didn't have work, um, watch a bit of Netflix, pop it up with your friends, but um, yeah, and quickly slide across when the tutor comes by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just had to whoop that one out, uh, yeah. did you, Archie? I really wanted to get it out of the system. <laughs> I'm writing all day. Also, in the question before about um, Borders Week, we forgot to mention, well, I forgot to mention, um, we had the assembly on Friday. Um, I'd say it went all right. We yeah. Are, sort of kept it, tried to keep it short and sharp because that's what people like. I think it was good fun because with assemblies like those, it's like you get your, all the informa information out that you needed, but you also kept them engaged. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think the assemblies where they just yap and yap for like hours on end, I think it was like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. It just gets boring. You guys actually made it fun. Yeah, we tried to incorporate a lot or well, the most amount of like videos and activities and yep. stuff like, yeah, more engaging okay. stuff. But yeah, um, I think that has to be one of the best boarding house assemblies I've been to oh, in my thanks, three George. years. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then nice. uh, after assembly at lunch, we had staff tours. So we took new staff and staff that haven't been around the boarding house before. Uh, they came in and had a look around. So it's good to show them around, see what their thoughts are. Because a lot of them went to boarding schools or had, I don't know, family or friends. That, and they sort of could speak about how different it was back then and how, how good we have it now. I only had one con about... One oh, thing. go on, go on, Archie. And uh, on... Sunday. When was it? We had that leaders' conference. Oh, yeah, so on we Monday had this, we had a leaders' conference. Yeah, so we met up with all the other uh, boarding schools, bar three or whatever it was. And then, so all the leaders, so boarding captains and a few other leadership roles in the boarding house came to Scotch for a, a forum. Um, and we all spoke about things. So we had one in Wildy earlier in the year. We spoke about things we want to start, change, do differently. Um, and we sort of had a little check up and spoke about how things are going. Um, so it was good to do that, um, see how our school compares to others. Um, and I think we've really, uh, really realised that we had to have it pretty good at our school. Um, we've got one of the best boarding houses from the sounds, definitely the best food. Uh, thanks to Paul, um, David, Judy, Whittier and the team. And then like the rules just around hand up and stuff. Like we've all got it pretty good. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. And you still hear some of the boys in our in our wing girls that complain about it, which is um yeah pretty funny. But it's yeah when you put it into comparison with other schools, we've got it really good. Um, mm -hmm. I used to be the same. I used to think, God, these rules are a bit annoying. But once you get older, and I don't know, realize what happens that, uh, elsewhere. So well, you're lucky, like, mate. You got to keep your phone and laptop. Yeah, I know. How did you? Oh, how did that transition going from year ten when you uh, only got to keep your laptop on Saturday? Um. I don't know. I think when I was in year 10, I hated it. I just wanted to keep my phone um, the whole time. But I don't know. I think it's sort of good, especially when you're in the dorms because you can sort of socialise a bit more even though you're not meant to. Um, and then it sort of sets you up later. Like, I know there's some people, um, and Shelsey speaks about this, like some people need a certain amount of sleep or they won't function. And there's like a recommended sleep or whatever, but some people can go less sleep than others and everyone... Like gets affected by it differently. So when you're in the dorms, if like, I'm sitting up on my phone all night, it might be keeping other people awake and, I don't know, affect them negatively. So, Regan, how did you find that transition? Because you said you came in year 10? Yeah, yeah, year yeah. 10. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, I guess, because, yeah, you always have it and then not. But I don't know. I guess, like, also people don't talk about this, but... With schoolwork as well, like having to hand up your laptop as well, you had to have all your work done by nine o'clock, which like actually was good because again, like routine and stuff like that. But like at the start, I was like, because normally I used to do my work at like crazy hours of the night, just like, but yeah, yep. Yeah, it's a big thing too. 
a lot of things. People always hand them up at midnight um, to get the most most they can, but we'd always have to get it done by what nine o'clock, eight yeah. forty-five. If you're lucky, if you're in year ten, I think I'm in yeah. year nine. It's eight forty-five for me. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. And then I know when um, Big Dixon was here, PS4s were a big issue. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things with controllers. A lot of boys had to start handing up their controllers because they'd just be up all night playing PS4 and all night. Is there anything like that night. in the girls' wing? I don't think so. We don't have really any of those. Any spare things. texts? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Definitely there was last year. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, nah, there's always going to be, I suppose, spare phones getting around. But I don't know. The staff are pretty good. And there's a lot of old staff that used to go to the school. Yeah, well, they're, they're on it. And they're <laughs> like, Matt Zagatti. Yeah, so there's a guy called Matt Zagat. And a lot of boys tried handing up their phone cases empty. So they just put their phone cases in there and. I don't know, he was pretty onto it. He was pretty switched on. I had a Nintendo Switch, and if you ever have them, you know, like the stands? I don't know. Oh, the stands, are, it was like yeah. a stands where you'd charge it, and I cut, tried to cut out like a phone shape. It didn't really work, so I just ended up snapping it and chucking it in my phone case, and uh, yeah, I didn't get my phone for a couple of days after that. <laughs> Using the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Any other stories from you guys before we head off? Um, I don't really know. There's Any like, other messages, yeah. motivational messages from you guys? No, I don't think so. Just, yeah, don't think. That's it. Yeah. Right. That's thank it. you guys. Thank you again for coming thank out. You so much. And Archie, if you want to finish it off, with the song. Go. On. There we go.